All right, so let me show you how I start off looking at this study. Uh, basically, I use the sagittal set of images. That's really the workhorse of the study. And it's uh, the most information you can get initially is really coming into the midline, uh, the sagittal spine. You see the long axis of the uh, cervical spine. So here, basically, I'm looking at the bony anatomy. I can see the foramen magnum here. The cervical spinal cord comes through here. And I can see the bony anatomy here. I can see the C1 ring. I can see C2, the dens of C2. I can see the vertebral body, C3, C4, C5, C6, and here's C7. I know this is T1. If I come out laterally, I can see the rib associated with it, so I know I'm in the thoracic spine. And what am I looking at? I'm basically looking at the alignment. There should be a nice gentle lordosis to the cervical spine. Uh, I'm basically checking each vertebral body, uh, looking at the cortex, which is peripheral, and the medullary space, which is uh, internal here. I'm basically making sure that each cortex is intact, that the vertebral body has a normal height, and there's no fracture. Uh, I'm basically uh, also looking here posteriorly, looking at these spinous processes. Again, looking for any fractures there. You can get a fracture at the C6 or C7 level, which is called a clay shoveler's fracture. Uh, I'm also looking at these disc spaces in between each of these vertebral bodies. Um, if one set is uh, one level is uh, abnormally widened relative to the rest, that can be indicative of a uh, traumatic injury or possibly a cult fracture at that level. Other things I'm running my eyes through, I'm basically looking at these pre-cervical soft tissues. You can see here the nasopharynx and the oropharynx. And here's the retropharyngeal uh, soft tissues, and these should be only 8 millimeters thick up to this level, up to the C4 level. Here you get the uh, pharynx splits into the airway here anteriorly, the larynx. And here's the esophagus, which is collapsed. And up here, or at this level, you can get up to 22 millimeters of thickness. So I already measured these, and these are normal. So other things I can look for in the midline sagittal plane is if I go to the soft tissue windows, I can see here faintly the CSF of the cervical uh, spine, the cord. Uh, the cord is right here. The CSF is basically here anteriorly and posteriorly. And I'm basically looking for any uh, epidural hematoma, which would be abnormal high density kind of layering here in this space. Uh, importantly, I don't want to mistake this. Uh, these are the high density of the craniocervical ligament complex. And I don't want to mistake that for pathology. So again, going back to bone windows, um, basically once I'm done with the midline, I like to go into the parasagittal plane, and basically uh, looking at this occipital and occipital condyle and C1 uh, articulation here, that should be a nice tight articulation. You can get a very severe uh, injury if these are disarticulated. Uh, basically, you can get a, almost a decapitation type injury, so I want to make sure that that's intact. I'm looking at uh, basically the facet alignment here on the lateral. You can see these facets lining up like shingles on a roof. And I uh, basically want to do that on both sides. You can get a fracture pattern where basically the facet perches, uh, displaces anteriorly, and locks on, on the inferior facet abnormally. So I can definitely exclude that by looking at the sagittal plane. So once I've gotten the most information out of the sagittal plane, I basically like to switch planes. So the next plane I like to look at is basically the chronal plane. So you can, here you can see the chronal plane. On this plane, you can see very nicely the occipital condyle uh, anatomy and the relationship to the C1 lateral masses. You can see here the dens poking up through the middle. You can see the entire uh, C2 vertebral body, including the dens. Uh, that's the most commonly fractured vertebral body, so I definitely want to give that a nice good look in multiple planes. And I can see this, this is a very nice slice showing the anatomy between the occipital condyles, C1 lateral mass, and C2, and that should be a very nice tight uh, alignment or articulation. Uh, importantly, a lot of, about half the fractures occur at this level, and the other half kind of occur at the C6, C7 level. So, also here in the chronal plane, I can see the uncinate process of the vertebral bodies, which is only found in the cervical spine. And I can also see in this plane the pillars of the cervical spine, which are basically just the facet joints in a different plane. Uh, so, all that anatomy looks very good. So, lastly, I go to the axial set of images, and basically, uh, I've up to every, now everything has been negative. So this really gives you the most sensitive evaluation of fractures. I go level by level, and uh, I just want to point out that this is the occipital mastoid uh, suture, and definitely don't mistake that for fractures, as you can see they're bilateral. As I come down, uh, you can see here the uh, these are the occipital condyles. This is the frame and magnum in the axial plane, and coming down into the C1 ring, you can see the anterior arch and the posterior arch here. You can see that everything's intact, so I know there's no Jefferson fracture. I can see here the dens poking up through the middle. So uh, as I come down, I can see the C2 uh, vertebral body. And if I come down to just a typical cervical spinal level, 
I basically like to run at each level the, the anatomy, which is basically, and make sure everything's intact, excluding even subtle non displaced factors. So I can see the total body, I can see the transverse process, and I can see the vertebral artery foramen. I can see the pedicle here on both sides. I can see the facet joint. I can see here the lamina. And the lamina come together here to form the spinous process, which is uh, bifid, as you can see, in the cervical spine. And I do that at every level to exclude even subtle fractures and get down to here the C7 level I can tell because this is a long spinous process and I come below that and I'm basically at the thoracic spinal level as I can see rib articulation. So basically done with the cervical spine, I'm basically going to look at other tissues including the lungs, look at the soft tissues quickly including the thyroid, checking the neck for any gross asymmetry. And basically looking at any other bones that uh, are visualized that I uh, haven't seen on other studies. Uh, usually you get uh, other imaging of that. So basically I'm ready to dictate this case. So basically as starting work uh, for our impression we like to say that there is no acute fracture or traumatic subluxation. And by traumatic subluxation we just basically mean that there's no slip of the vertebral body uh, on each other due to a fracture in the uh, either the vertebral body or the posterior elements. And I like to also add in that there's no pre-vertebral soft tissue swelling and no epidural hematoma. So that's it. That's basically my search pattern for a non-contrast CT of the cervical spine. Thank you.